Hi, I'm Daniel. I'm a sleep physician. And if you have insomnia, this channel is for you. Kathy is struggling with chronic insomnia and wonders, should she have a sleep study? Nice having you back here. And if it's your first time on the channel, welcome. Hope you find something of value here. Today, a question from Kathy. Kathy is in fact Katie from episode 58. At that time, she had emailed me and I figured uh, for privacy reasons, I just changed the name from Kathy to Katie. But as this question comes in the form of a comment, we shall go with Kathy. Before we get to Kathy's question, which I believe is a very good and very important one, as always, nothing here is medical advice to anyone, but thoughts and comments and uh, general advice that I think may be helpful to you, Kathy, as well as anybody else that has a similar question. That said, let's get right to this comment from seven hours ago. Hi, Daniel. I emailed you about a month ago and your tips are helpful. I really wish we had more caring and compassionate physicians like you. Thank you, Katie. That, that really made my day uh, reading this. That, very kind words. Thank you. Uh, on Monday, I went to a sleep physician about my chronic insomnia, but he says it's impossible for me to be awake for so long, and it seemed like he didn't believe me. He says he believes I have paradoxical insomnia and ordered a polysomnography test for next week at a sleep lab. Should I go through with that? Should I go to the sleep lab? You suggested CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, and I'm seeing a therapist, and she's helpful because I can talk to someone about how I'm feeling, but I am struggling. Very sorry to hear that you're struggling with your insomnia. Uh, I'm happy that you have a therapist and uh, I'm hopeful that you will get to a place where you sleep better soon. Uh, for now, let us focus on this question you have, which I again think is a very good one. Should someone with insomnia have a sleep study? And uh, and I, 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 I face that question very often in clinic. You know, I see... Uh, uh, many pa people with insomnia as well as people with sleep apnea and for sleep apnea that's really when you need to do sleep testing I would say 95% uh, or something like that of all sleep studies done are to see if somebody has obstructive sleep apnea now sometimes there's kind of an overlap where you have somebody that struggles with sleep have a hard time falling asleep staying asleep but also reports like you know snoring loudly they may be choking in sleep, they stop breathing in sleep, they're very tired during the day. Well, then then I think it's oftentimes very meaningful to do a sleep study because yes, sleep apnea definitely can cause insomnia type symptoms. And I've seen many, many patients that had a hard time falling asleep, staying asleep, turns out they have sleep apnea, you treat their sleep apnea and their insomnia is resolved. But um, they, have, they have symptoms of sleep apnea, they snore, uh, that's kind of a minimum. They, they snore typically loudly and oftentimes have uh, no, have, have been noted to stop breathing or note, note that themselves. Now, what if you see somebody, what if you as a provider see somebody that you believe has insomnia? They do not have sleep apnea symptoms. They do not have sim uh, symptoms of another um, kind of underlying sleep disorder but they, they, they have a hard time falling asleep and staying asleep. They, they have you know, classical insomnia symptoms. Generally speaking, it is not recommended to do a sleep study. Generally speaking, it is not helpful. Personally, I will say I very, very, very rarely would uh, do a sleep study on somebody that I, that I believe has insomnia without an underlying sleep disorder. But you have to consider the following. Uh, somebody in this case in kathy's case is thinking that kathy has what's called paradoxical insomnia and what is that well the paradoxical insomnia is when somebody is uh underestimating quite significantly how much they sleep in like the extreme case uh people estimate sleeping nothing at all like people will say i don't sleep at all and i haven't slept at all for weeks or even months and, and that is very rare i think i've come across maybe two or three uh, uh patients that have reported that in my, you know, what's seven, eight, seven or eight hours in sleep. But what is very common is that somebody to some degree is underestimating how much they sleep. For example, somebody may be sleeping 
uh, six hours, but they uh, estimate sleeping four hours. They may be sleeping, you know, seven hours, but estimate sleeping, you know, three and a half or something like that. And uh, I will say that um, when somebody reports like on a night to night basis sleeping less than four hours, I often do think that there may be a, a, a component of paradoxical insomnia. And I say that because studies show that if somebody uh, gets less than four hours of sleep on a night to night basis, that that is not sustainable. Like they will typically have some type of collapse um, where they where they sleep, you know, a very long time. Uh, but you know, in your case, Kathy, uh, of course, I, I don't know how much you're sleeping. You probably know be better than anybody else. But th the reason I think, when it comes to paradoxical insomnia, uh, there there may be occasions where it is valuable to do sleep study. Is is the following? I have come across. A few patients uh, that um, have done a sleep study and 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 I've shown them the results, shown them that you know you actually slept six hours when they felt they slept three hours, and some of them have been reassured by that. Uh, you know, it hasn't really changed their symptoms, of course, but some people feel like, okay, I actually do sleep more than I thought, and and that makes them feel better. So what it kind of boils down to, in my opinion, is. How would it make you feel if somebody told you that you sleep more than you do? Let me elaborate on that. There are more or less you know, three outcomes uh, if you're doing a sleep study to look at how much you sleep. One is that the study confirms that you're estimating correctly. Let's say you thought you slept three hours and you slept three hours. Well, in that case, to me, it hasn't brought that much value. What if uh, the study shows that you slept less than you thought you did? Well, in my opinion, it's kind of the same. We already know that, you know, you estimate sleeping very little and this shows that you slept even less. Well, it hasn't really helped that much. But what if you come back for the follow-up and your doctor tells you, you know, you estimated sleeping three hours, but you actually slept six and a half hours. If that would make you feel reassured, if it would make you feel better knowing that you sleep a little bit more than you think you sleep, then perhaps it is meaningful to do a sleep study. If in the same scenario, you know, you're coming back for the follow-up and you're told, you know, you estimated sleeping three hours, but you actually slept six and a half hours. If that would simply make you question the validity of the study, then perhaps not so much is gained from doing a sleep study when there is a question of whether you have paradoxical insomnia. Basically, that really sums it up in my mind. Um, I hope this was helpful to you, Kathy, and anybody else with uh, a similar question. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, if you want to share a sleep problem, any comments, please leave a comment here or email me at insomniainsight at gmail.com. And I hope to have you back here very, very, very soon. Until then, take it easy.